It is uh, Sunday, the uh, 11th of December, 2016. I'm in front of the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal. I got some uh, people going in here, younger people. And uh, <clears throat> I was just uh, starting up my alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy. And uh, I'm looking right now at the so-called wayside pulpit of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Uh, the wayside pulpit is a church sign type of thing that's quite common to Unitarian Universalist churches where they have a church sign that's dedicated to various uh, sayings and so on. Um, I like to call it the wayward pulpit because so often what's on the sign is uh, sheer hypocrisy based on how Unitarian Universalists, you know, actually behave. You know, they, you know, claim to hold to all these, you know, ideals of, you know, respect for the inherent worth and dignity of every person, uh, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, uh, acceptance of one another and encouragement of our spiritual growth, uh, free and responsible search for truth and meaning, uh, right of conscience and the use of the democratic process in society at large um, and so on and so forth. Uh, well what we're looking at right now is I have very good reason to believe the mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montreal and what's interesting about it <clears throat> is how incredibly vague and completely lacking in any moral values it is. Um, you know, our spiritual community welcomes, nurtures, inspires, challenges. Together we could take, uh, sorry, together we take action in the world. Well, that really doesn't say very much <clears throat> on a moral and ethical level uh, because, you know, a spiritual community or any other community can welcome people or welcome behaviors that are unethical and immoral and even criminal and harmful and dangerous and so on. The same goes for nurturing. You know, a spiritual community or any other community can nurture people who are immoral, unethical, illegal, I'm criminal, uh, evil is the word I was looking for. I, and there's no such thing as an illegal person per se, as uh, immigration uh, advocates like to point out. Uh, I meant to say evil. Um, so they, they, you know, they, they can and, and in fact they do nurture abuse of people and so on. Uh, the same thing goes for inspiration. You know, uh, a spiritual community or any other community can inspire some pretty horrific things and they can certainly inspire unethical, immoral, evil, criminal, corrupt behavior and so on. And our spiritual community challenges, well again, challenges, uh, you know, communities can challenge good things, you know, ch communities can challenge, uh, uh, you know, the human rights and, and, and so on. They can challenge uh, the truth, you know, they can try to suppress the truth and so on. Uh, together we take action in the world. Well, it's essentially meaningless so, you know they, they, they could uh, together they can take uh, immoral unethical criminal evil action in the world uh, abusive action in the world and so on so there's zero moral component to this mission statement and it could be interpreted in a very negative way depending upon what the spiritual community which i presume refers to the unitarian church of montreal uh, but could also apply to the larger Unitarian Universalist religious community, you know, depending on what it actually welcomes, depending on what it actually nurtures, depending on what it actually inspires, depending on what it actually challenges, depending on the kinds of actions it takes in the world, it could be a very immoral, unethical, corrupt, abusive, evil, uh, degenerate, uh, and so on, uh, spiritual community. Uh, and in fact, uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal does in fact welcome things that are unethical, immoral, corrupt, even evil. Uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal nurtures 
abusive people and uh, nurtures abusive behaviors. Uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal inspires, again, uh, some quite bad behavior. It inspires unethical behavior. It inspires immoral behavior. It inspires uh, even criminal behavior to some extent. Uh, if it has inspired uh, people to steal my picket signs and assault me and so on. Um, the Unitarian Church of Montreal certainly challenges my right to practice my constitutionally guaranteed civil right of peaceful public protest and it challenges me in other ways. Um, so we can say that together Montreal Unitarians and more broadly Unitarian Universalists take action in the world that is you know immoral, unethical, corrupt, abusive, evil, criminal, borderline criminal and so on and so forth. So, so essentially uh, this uh, wayward, wayside pulpit uh, really doesn't say very much uh, about the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Um, so it is, as I said, the 11th of December. So the sidewalks are kind of mucky. This is the uh, basically first sort of wintry kind of sidewalk, you know, with salt or sand on it. So I won't be doing chalk slogans today. It looks like chalk slogans are going to be on hold until the spring. Uh, so I'll be circulating with picket signs, and uh, I will be circulating uh, with, uh, not this one, um, <clears throat> the other side of this one though, we might want to do a little bit of explaining. Um, unsafe sect. So this is actually a picket sign that has been in existence since 1999, if I remember correctly. Possibly even later in 1998, but definitely in 1999, I had a picket sign with this slogan on it. Um, the previous version had a question mark. You know, it said unsafe sect with a question mark. And, you know, it was basically asking, you know, a somewhat rhetorical question. You know, is the Unitarian Universalist... Uh, sect, because it is a sect, um, unsafe? And of course the answer to that question is yes. You know, no community is completely safe. So then the question is, well, how unsafe is the Unitarian Universalist religious community? How unsafe is the Unitarian Church of Montreal? And what kind of less than safe things are we talking about? Well, in my case, I'm talking about various kinds of abusive behaviors that I personally have been subjected to by Unitarian Universalists, but you know, I was also talking about behaviors that I have not been uh, personally subjected to, but have become aware of. And of course, one of those behaviors is clergy sexual misconduct. I, as far as I'm concerned, am a victim of non-sexual clergy misconduct, and I'm a victim of uh, shunning and bullying and intimidation and so on following reporting that non-sexual clergy misconduct but the fact of the matter is that you know pretty much any religious community of any size is going to have a certain amount of sexual misconduct on the part of its clergy to say nothing of its Sunday school teachers and so on um, and you know as a result of complaining about the non-sexual clergy misconduct that I was subjected to by Reverend Ray Drennan here at the Unitarian Church of Montreal, um, you know, I soon became aware that, uh, you know, not only did the Unitarian Universalist religious community uh, have a bit of a clergy sexual misconduct problem, but it did a pretty poor job of handling clergy misconduct. Like many, many other religious communities, you know, whenever a minister was... Uh, accused of clergy sexual misconduct, well, very often the local church and also the Unitarian Universalist Association would do everything that they could to essentially protect the minister and, you know, little or nothing to uh, deal responsibly be with the uh, misconduct in question. And, you know, people who made complaints were often, uh, you know, shunned and intimidated. And even people who didn't who weren't direct victims, but for instance, you know, advocates and whistleblowers were also um, shunned and intimidated and so on uh, by local churches and also 
by the Unitarian Universalist Association. So, uh, looks like this person is most likely heading into the church. So, uh, well, perhaps not. Nope, I guess not. Going up the uh, sidewalk here, not going into the church via this entrance. <coughs> so, anyhow, <coughs> we shall just uh, circulate here. So yeah, so in my left hand I'm displaying a picket sign that says unsafe sect. I think I've explained that uh, adequately. In my right hand it says Unitarian Universalist, or I should say Unitarian Universalist, singular. Perversion of justice sucks you, asterisk you. Um, so, so yeah, perversion of justice. Well, obviously that means not only not providing justice, but even bending the rules and, and uh, in various ways preventing, delaying, denying justice. Uh, you know, that's what that covers. And uh, there's no question that the Unitarian Universalists, you know, in terms of their leadership, UUA leadership, and uh, the leadership of various churches, to say nothing of, you know, various individual Unitarian Universalists who are not UUA leaders or clergy, etc. Um, they definitely do pervert justice in various ways. And uh, one of the most uh, glaring and utterly uh, shameful ways that uh, Unitarian Universalists uh, pervert justice uh, is uh, misusing blasphemy law to cover up and uh, hide uh, what the, the Unitarian Universalist Association's uh, Canadian attorney describes as such despicable crimes as pedophilian rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers. Um, on Friday, June 1st of 2012, I received in my email inbox a email from Steichman Elliott, Barristers and Solicitors, litigation lawyer, Major Mark andre Coulomb. And uh, that email just had a very brief statement saying, please refer to the attachment or attached document or something like that. And it had a PDF file attached to it. So I opened up the PDF file and had a look at it. And it was a two page uh, cease and desist demand letter that amongst other highly questionable and even quite literally laughable accusations that it made against me um, accused me of the criminal act of blasphemous libel. Uh, in one of the f concluding paragraphs of that letter on the second page said, and this is an exact quote, your unfounded and vicious allegations to the affected ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape are defamatory and it went on to say that they're so defamatory that they constitute the criminal act of blasphemous libel. Now, you know, when I first saw that, I'd never heard the term blasphemous libel. I knew what blasphemy is, I knew what being blasphemous is, but I'd, I'd never heard the specific term blasphemous libel. And I didn't immediately understand that it was talking about a criminal act. You know, libel is a civil tour. You know, libel, as a rule, is something that you, uh, you know, can sue someone for, but it's not a criminal act per se. Although there are, there are in fact, uh, some forms of criminal libel um, and laws against criminal libel. Um, and that's essentially what was going on here. I mean, this was essentially Canada's blasphemy law, which I didn't even know existed at the time. Uh, but, you know, I googled blasphemous libel, quickly found out in general terms what blasphemous libel was. Googled blasphemous libel Canada, quickly found out, you know, the Canadian take on blasphemous libel and quickly found out that uh, blasphemous libel is in fact a uh, criminal act in Canada. It's a section of the Canadian Criminal Code, section 296 if I'm not mistaken, which prohibits blasphemous libel and uh, says that a person who's found guilty of blasphemous libel can be sentenced to a jail term of up to two years. So essentially the Unitarian Universalist Association 
was threatening with having me charged with a criminal act, which, if I was found guilty of committing it, could potentially lead to a jail term of up to two years. A fairly serious threat. Um, in any case, you know, the premise for accusing me of blasphemous libel specifically said you're unfounded and vicious allegations. That's how it started off. So it said my allegations were unfounded, and in addition to being unfounded, they were vicious. Um, well, I knew right off the bat that nothing that I had uh, said about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles or rapists was in any way unfounded. Uh, the blog post that I had published about uh, Unitarian Universalists, pedophiles and rapists were about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and or rapists who had been charged, tried and convicted of rape and or sexual abuse of children. And, and in fact, uh, I should say preteen children because actually uh, the cases I blogged about in both cases, the victims could reasonably be described as children. In one case, uh, the case of Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell, uh, he lured vulnerable teenage Tibetan refugees away from their families in India with promises of a better life in America. You know, he essentially represented to the families of these teenage Tibetan refugees that he would bring them to America and take good care of them and ensure that they got a good education. And that's how he managed to lure them away from their families to his uh, parish in Massachusetts. He then proceeded to repeatedly rape them over a period measured in years, in at least one case, uh, several years actually. Um, and uh, and uh, so that's one case. So Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell was charged, tried, and convicted of uh, the forcible rape of uh, teenage Tibetan refugees. And uh, 